are you looking for a printer that can print right out of the box? Something enclosed that can print higher temperature materials like ABS and polycarbonate? Do you want to explore the powerful Clipper firmware, but you just don't know where to begin? Well, the King Rune KLP1 would like to have a word with you because it thinks it's a worthy candidate. Is it? On today's video, we're going to find out. And here we go. Folks, welcome to the channel. I am Leo of Prince Leo 3D. Thank you so much for joining me on another Slice Print Review, where today we'll be taking a look at the King Rune KLP-1. This is an enclosed filament-based 3D printer that has a Core XY setup, which in tandem with the firmware it's utilizing allows for very high speeds and very high accelerations. The enclosure it comes with means we'll be able to print some harder to print materials that require a warm environment, namely ABS. But we can also print even higher temperature materials like polycarbonate and nylon, all due to that enclosed warm environment. Most importantly, this is all being run with Clipper firmware. That means we get access to everything Clipper offers. We can monitor prints with a webcam. We have Wi-Fi control, so we don't need to be standing in front of the printer to use it. But if we are standing, we also have this Clipper screen, which allows us to operate this 3D printer while we are right in front of it. So we get both halves, Wi-Fi control from a web page and also direct control from the Clipper screen. We get more robust motion controls, which means we can reach higher than normal speeds and accelerations. And we even have access to precise calibrations, namely smooth pressure advance and input shaping. And speaking of input shaping, for that calibration, an accelerometer is a necessary component. This 3D printer comes equipped with that already installed on the printhead. So out of the box, we have access to input shaping calibrations. So there's a lot to like in this relatively small, relatively inexpensive package, but let's just take a closer look at some of the blemishes, some of the strengths of this 3D printer. This is an enclosed Core XY 3D printer. The enclosure is made up of flexible panels that come removed while shipping, and then you assemble them yourself after unboxing this printer. Now, Core XY means the printhead is going to move along the left to right and the front to back planes. And you'll notice it is using linear rails for both of those axes. The bed only moves up and down while printing, which takes up that Z axis, that vertical height. Now, this setup, along with this particular belt routing that is unique to Core XY, allows us to attain very high speeds while still maintaining very high quality. The printhead itself uses direct extrusion, meaning the extruder, which is dual geared, is sitting directly on top of the hot end. The hot end is all metal and it's using V6 style nozzles. The hot end comes equipped with a ceramic heating core which heats these nozzles up extremely quickly. All the components of the printhead get plugged into this small breakout board that is nestled on the side of the extruder. The fan connections can be found here, thermistor, heating cartridge, and the bed probe wiring are all located here. This board is connected to the main board using a CAN bus connection which limits the amount of wires needed only utilizing these four wires to run this entire breakout board. Now this printer is using an inductive probe as a bed probe, eschewing the more common BL Touch pin style probe that a lot of these other printers are offering. Now the build size for this printer is a little understated at 210 millimeters by 210 millimeters by 210 millimeters. While the overall footprint for this 3D printer comes in 420 millimeters by 420 millimeters by 400 millimeters. Now, of course, you have to take into account the filament spool that would be placed on the back of this 3D printer and add that to the overall space that this might occupy. Now, the bed sheet that this comes with is a double-sided powder-coated PEI bed. It offers great adhesion, maybe a little too good for PETG and ABS. I'd recommend with some of those applications to use a glue stick as a release agent. You'll apply a little bit of glue stick on your PEI bed, and this way, when you remove your PETG, and ABS prints, they don't stick to the bed, removing either the bottom layer of your print completely or even pieces of the bed may leave with it. So a glue stick as a release agent is a great idea for those two materials. Now I've mentioned this 3D printer runs on Clipper firmware, which means we can communicate with this wirelessly through a web page, but we are also given direct access to this without the need of another device through the Clipper screen. Now this allows us to start prints, cancel prints, load and unload filament. We have complete access to all of our starting macros 
and a whole host of other functions direct from this screen. The one thing you won't find within this enclosure is any sort of filtration. So if you're going to be printing with ABS, which releases VOCs while printing, you'll need to figure out some sort of filtration system. Now I'll talk about that a little more later on. On the side of this printer, we have two USB ports and a single USB 3.0 port for peripherals, like a webcam. And then we have an ethernet port directly next to it if you want to hardwire an internet connection. Otherwise, you can use a built-in Wi-Fi connection. The back of this printer is where the filament is mounted and directly in front of that is a filament runout sensor. The placement of the runout sensor and the placement of the spool holder are very poor and we're going to go over that a little further in this video when we get to the con section or the things that I did not like about this printer. Sitting below this printer is an all-in-one integrated mainboard. That means the clipper host device and the mainboard that operates the 3D printer stepper drivers and all its functions are together as one. You can also see the belt driven Z axis down here. Now everything is very clean. You're given a lot of space and you'll notice this large mainboard cooling fan. If you haven't heard it kick on behind me while this video is operating, that's a good thing. Now I've spent a decent amount of time with this 3D printer. I have over 200 plus printable hours alone with it. I like it a whole lot. It really performed well for me, but it's not without its faults. And let's talk about some of those now. To start, the clipper screen, out of the box, the language option was in Chinese. Now, I don't expect every single 3D printer to be in the language I use, but if you are shipping it to the United States, I would assume you might want to change it to whatever the most common language is there. That being said, we do have the option of changing the language directly through the clipper screen. Of course, it's a lot harder when you don't understand what any of the words are, but we fumbled through it on stream actually, and I was able to change it directly from clipper screen from Chinese to English. Now a slightly more advanced way to do this would be if we were able to get an internet connection. So we could plug a direct internet connection into this 3D printer through ethernet, get an IP address, travel to our front end, go into the configuration files, find the clipper screen.conf and change the language from there from Chinese to English. That is definitely a more advanced way to have fixed this screen. And we could have done that, but for a newer user, I really don't think that's an option. The back of this printer is sort of a mess, and we'll talk about filament placement and filament runout sensor placement. The spool holder for the 3D printer does not accept like the most common size spools. They fit, but as they start rotating while the print is operating, they begin to get hung up on the edge of the spool holder. This will basically act like a tangle. No new filament will be deposited through your extruder, and the filament runout sensor will not detect this because there will still be filament within the sensor. The height of this spool holder also makes the entry angle of filament very poor, and it makes it impossible to effectively use the filament runout sensor. For my first handful of prints, I was not able to use this sensor whatsoever. Just because the filament pathway was so poor, the filament would have bound up while I was printing. So I had to print without the use of that runout sensor. The fix to this is to print yourself a new spool holder. There is one available on printables.com. I'm going to link it in the description. This lowers the position of your spool. It extends the spool holder so no spools will get hung up on the outer edge and it will allow us to remove one screw from the filament runout sensor, rotate it about 30 degrees and allow us to utilize the runout sensor by maintaining a more effective filament pathway. This is an important modification that you will absolutely need to make if you want to use this filament runout sensor properly. Another option are these rep racks. This is a 3D printable rack made by RepCord, and you can place your filament spool inside here. There are some bearings you need to install as you assemble it, and then you can place your filament spool basically wherever you want to give you the best filament pathway while still using the filament runout sensor. Now, of course, this is going to add to the footprint or the space occupied by your 3D printer, but it looks really cool, and it will offer you the best movement capabilities for your spool. The fans. Can you hear it? It's loud. Two fans on this 3D printer will basically be on all the time. One is the power supply fan. Really not that loud in and of itself. The mainboard cooling fan though is loud. Now this fan is controllable via firmware. The fan comes on based on the temperature of the mainboard, which is a great way to do it. And Kingroon has that threshold so low, it will always be on. I increase that temperature threshold ever so slightly so now the mainboard cooling fan still maintains proper operating temperature for the mainboard, 
but it just doesn't kick on and kick off quite as often. It's sort of a band-aid, it's not a complete solution, but it works for my application. I have so many 3D printers operating all at the same time, the noise sort of becomes white noise to me, but this one was a little egregious, and if you are considering this 3D printer, you really should know that. Now, of course, we always have the option of replacing this mainboard fan for something equally as powerful, but slightly less noisy. The parts cooling fan, printed out of the factory in PLA. Now, that's on the print head. That means it's gonna be near something of very high temperature. If you're gonna print PETG or ABS, that part cooling fan will melt and it will warp. There is a replacement fan shroud though, and I recommend printing this in either ABS or polycarbonate. This way, when you are printing those high temperature materials, it does not warp, it does not bend, and you get adequate cooling. I touched on this earlier. One of the key features of this 3D printer is the fact that it's enclosed. Very few printers at this price range are offered like that. Enclosures mean we want to print certain materials we can't without one, like ABS. ABS releases harmful particulates in the air while it is printing. This has zero filtration within the enclosure. That means you are getting bombarded with any VOCs that ABS may be releasing, which of course leaves that to us, the user, to figure out some sort of filtration. Now, I chose the Nevermore Micro V4. This is an open source project that is mostly 3D printable. It requires a single 5015 fan and some activated carbon. It's small enough where it can be mounted inside this enclosure, plugged into the main board, and operate. This will circulate the enclosed air while it is printing and remove as much of the harmful particulates as it can. Now, this is not making us 100% safe, nothing ever will, but it is, I would think, a necessary step in trying to make this 3D printer safer when printing ABS. Now, of course, the Nevermore Micro V4 is not the only option you can choose. There's a lot of options out there for filtration. That's what I chose. If you have something better, leave it in the comments. If you've tried the Nevermore, if you've tried maybe the Bento Box is another option, I'd love to hear about it. You can leave a YouTube comment. I am going to have a video in the near future about how to assemble and use the Nevermore Micro V4, as it's a great option nowadays because more and more printers are coming in closed. Maybe not at this price range, but they are coming in closed, and we need to think about filtration. One last thing I wanted to mention was the extruder. While this printer was producing very nice models, there was some effect on the outer walls that I was noticing that I didn't like. It was very hard to notice, but to me, it looked extruder related. Couple that with the fact that unloading filament via the macro was an issue. It felt almost as if the extruder was applying too much pressure to the filament. I decided to remove the print head and take a look inside this extruder. What I discovered was the large drive gear that is driven from the extruder motor was not imparting that movement to the gear that pushes and pulls the filament. As I move the large white gear, the small silver gear should mirror its movement, but it does not. Something is impeding its motion, which means the extruder is not going to be able to properly push or pull the correct amount of filament we are asking for it because the movement being translated from the motor to the drive gear to the filament gears is not correct. After completely disassembling the extruder, I didn't see any defects inside. When I put it back together, I made special care to make sure everything made it properly and the gears were meshing fully. After I reinstalled the print head, all my subsequent prints were pristine. This took my issue away completely. So for whatever reason, there was some issue within that extruder. Likely it was not assembled correctly from the factory, but after I disassembled it, put it together properly, and then reinstalled it, all those issues were gone. This is offering an enclosed and fast 3D printer at a very low cost. You'll be able to print any of the common 3D printing materials, PLA, PETG, TPU, as well as some of those harder to print ones like ABS, polycarbonate, and nylon. And you'll be printing those rather quickly because this is using Clipper firmware and that robust motion system allows us to print quick but also precise. The setup is very straightforward. Printing is easy and it's very well put together. As a matter of fact, I put this together, I unbox it on a stream not too long ago. I'll put a link uh, up at the top of this video and in the description if you're curious exactly how this looks coming out of the box. Most importantly for this 3D printer is what it offers and that is untethered access to Clipper firmware. More and more printers on the market today are beginning to offer Clipper firmware. But with those printers, there's usually a barrier between Clipper and us the user. You get everything Clipper offers, but you just have to work a little harder to do it. 
Let me fix that for you. But with the King Rune KLP1, you don't have to worry about that. You get an unbridled version of Clipper, which is great for those users who are a little nervous about Clipper and want to get their feet wet. The printer will work for you right out of the box. This gives you an opportunity to see how Clipper functions. Familiarize yourself with it, and then maybe you'll get comfortable enough to start adding it to other printers or explore Clipper a little more in depth and see exactly what this can offer you. And that, to me, is a huge strength. This is offering you complete Clipper access, but it's set up in such a way that you don't need to do any sort of mucking around when you first get it. You can slowly learn how Clipper operates, make adjustments here or there. Like I said, get your feet wet, and then eventually feel comfortable enough with Clipper where you feel right at home with this firmware and you can start seeing all of the benefits it offers. So that has been my experience with the King Rune KLP1. I really liked it a lot. It gave me everything I asked for and more. We had a few hiccups along the way, obviously the filament spool holder, the run out sensor, but we were able to take care of those issues and this thing has been printing for me excellently. Of course, not without its faults. It's always a balancing act with anything we talk about. And of course, I covered those in this video, but for me, the pros and the operation of this 3D printer far outweighed any of the negatives. This 3D printer was given to me free of charge by ZBanks.com for purpose of this review, and I thank them very much. If you are considering buying this 3D printer, I am going to leave a link in the description. There will likely be a coupon code down there as well, depending on the time frame that you are watching this. That will be an affiliate link, so if you do buy through there, it costs you nothing, but I get a little kickback, and I appreciate that. If you want to find other ways to give back to the channel, if you think that this is such great content that you need to monetarily give back, I have a Patreon now. You can join the Patreon, you'll get access to all my videos ahead of time, and you'll be featured at the end right here with all the rest of my pages where I say thank you so much. If you have questions about this 3D printer or anything else, leave them in the comments below. We love to have a conversation. If you want to join a more broad discussion, the Prince Leo 3D Discord is the place to be. Talking every day, people are showing build projects. We kick around different ideas. I show off some of the things I'm doing in preparation for these videos. And when I go live for a live stream, you'll get notified of that. The link for the Discord also in the description. I try and keep the descriptions on my video very descriptive. Shocker, that's what they're there for, right? So if I talk about something in this video, it's likely going to be found in more detail somewhere down there. You can go to my website also where I have even more information available on this video, past videos, and even future videos. I am starting to live stream now, so every Wednesday, at 7.30 Eastern Standard Time. You'll be seeing my face live at, through your laptop or your TV, however you enjoy YouTube. And every week, it's something new. I've been doing a ton of unboxings. This was an unboxing. We just did a JG Maker R1 unboxing. Gonna have some projects going forward and even some Clipper tutorials. So check that out if you are available Wednesdays. And if you're not, there's always the videos on demand afterwards. You could watch it after it has been recorded. Thank you so much for watching this video, for leaving a comment. You are all the lifeblood of this channel. It makes us go forward. We do it together, and I thank you so much. And until next time, as always, boys, girls, everyone else, keep on printing.